Hello everyone, my name is Anitsu, and I'm back with another Digimon video. So today's going to be a little bit different of a video, and this is kind of a video that I actually scrapped and shelved. I had the scripts and slides all prepared and ready, waiting for BT12 and people to start complaining about Quartzmon, but unfortunately people didn't complain about Quartzmon. So that kind of put me into a really weird position where I couldn't really release this video because the information, while it is kind of true, it isn't really indicative of where the meta is and what the current problem is with BT12. So as far as just some of the basic rundowns, I'm just going to flip through some of the slides so you can kind of see what I had prepared and to kind of see un understand why I decided to ultimately scrap the video. Now there still is some pretty decent information inside of the video there's a couple of deck profiles that you could go and look at for some more casual decks that allow you to incorporate Quartzmon inside of it because he is still just a pretty decent generically good level 7 that a wide variety of decks can utilize it depending on what you want that deck to do and how court and how that deck is going to best support Quartzmon. So as far as uh, Quartzmon as a card, it's just a very strong card, obviously, being able to lock down the opponent's field. It could digivolve uh, on top of uh, level 5s with save in their texts for a pretty large amount, but he has a wind digivolving ability that's going to help him gain some memory back, which you could also use a little bit easier on top of level 6s in three different colors. So the fact that he has uh, all of these different ways to be able to digivolve into him, and uh, a lot of these colors do have have swarm based strategies make Quartzmon an ideal level 7 Digimon for those types of decks to use that want to flood and swarm the field. And that's not only the big pull and reason on how you could use him inside of your deck, he's also a really good anti-meta card in case the opponent is playing a Flood and Swarm type style of deck, then he could be an absolute menace and nuisance in that type of uh, deck as well. And even in color locked specific formats like Ultimate Cup, he's a really good card just because he's a color based card, so you could at least use him inside of green decks on top of the fact that uh, there's not necessarily as many answers in that format as there is in the main game to be able to deal with Quartzmon. So Quartzmon is still just a pretty decent card for a lot of decks to use, making him a highly desirable level 7. So I listed out uh, the Q&A about all of the specific rules on Quartzmon, so feel free to read up on that at your leisure. And then as far as uh, just some of the other synergies that I listed, he can just be played in a lot of decks uh, that can best utilize him not only mechanically, but color identity wise as well. So as far as the decks that can actually best utilize him, we do have a decent amount of decks that are able to incorporate him, uh, like uh, Hunters, Bloom Lord, Diaboromon, Eosmon, and various other green, black, or white decks uh, that can just use a good generic level 7. So more specifically in Hunters, he does care about uh, the save mechanic in terms of digivolving on top of level 5s, on top of the fact that uh, Hunters uh, does have a level 5 that's more specifically interacting with Quartzmon. So this is just a base example list on Quartzmon being able to fit inside of the deck and still be relatively useful and powerful as a good alternative win condition or big boss monster for that deck. Then, as far as one of the other decks that I mentioned that's going to be best complementing how Quartzmon wants to play is going to be Bloom Lordmon. So, Bloom Lordmon, obviously, he is a green based deck, and Quartzmon is a green Digimon that could also digivolve on top of green. So, there's just some natural color based synergy there, on top of the fact that uh, Bloom Lordmon is a go wide deck. So, you're trying to go tall, and while you're going tall, you're going wide, and then because you're going wide, you're going to utilize the fact that your Digimon are suspended to be able to gain extra benefits and make it going into your Quartzmon as cheap as you possibly can make it, on top of uh, stunlocking the entire field on the opponent's side as well. But you don't necessarily care about how big their field is, you just care about how big your field is, so that way you can make Quartzmon cheaper yourself, while also gaining the benefits of your Digimon being suspended or wanting to be suspended, just because that's what a lot of these uh, new green style of cards are interacting and playing around with mechanically. 
So here's just an example of Quartz Bond being able to fit easily inside of Bloom Lord Bond. You could tell that uh, this is a little bit on the older side just because uh, I'm running uh, Blossom Bond at a higher quantity than one when this video uh, was initially scripted. But if you wanted to, you could just drop a Blossom onto one and then just run two of anything else that you want to, that can go inside of the deck that helps with the overall game plan and functionality. Then we go into some of the more interesting uh, text uh, that uh, Quartz Bond can go inside of. So I know a lot of people were really happy that the fact that uh, he is an unidentified, so it works on top of uh, all of the Diabormons because Diabormon is also in white and black. So it makes for a perfect new addition for that style of deck on top of Diabormon already wanting to be a swarm based deck trying to flood the field with Diabormon tokens. So I'm not necessarily going to be doing a hardcore deck profile on this deck, but uh, this is just an example on how you can make Quartzmon work inside of Diabormon. And then another pretty underrated deck and underused deck that a lot of people were thinking about utilizing Quartz Bond in is Eos Bond. So Eos Bond is another white based level six deck that also wants to, again, flood the field and swarm as best as it possibly can, just because of the level five Eos Bond wanting you to play other level five Eos Bonds. So if you build, again, wide enough of a field, have a nice level six sitting on the field, you could just digivolve it into a Quartz Bond and start going from there. And then here's just an example of a uh, Eos Bond deck incorporating Quartz Bond as well. But there are just a whole bunch of uh, other decks uh, that uh, you could think about uh, utilizing with Quartz Bond, and it's not limited to just uh, what I just showed you. I know there's been GG Mon decks that have been using it casually, and uh, the card isn't necessarily as strong as people think. It's really annoying to deal with, uh, and you need to try to think about building and preparing your deck around it, but uh, it does have some noticeable weaknesses, as you can see on screen. But if you want a halfway decent uh, GG Mon list that's incorporating Quartz Mon, uh, my friend Top Dog Pro gave me this list uh, to show off. And if you want a grandest example that's also incorporating Quartz Mon, then here is that for you as well. And I'm sure Quartz Mon has a lot of other creative and clever uses at being as good and generic of a card as he is. But that's not saying that Quartz Bond isn't a strong card, because it is, it's just not as meta-defining as uh, I initially thought going into the BT12 format. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu, so giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there, and I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.